Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are going to start. We are going to start remaining slides. So we are going to start with project planning process. So what is this project planning process? This is it's an, it's an objective and talks about the requirements and scope. Actually, it's an objective and talks about the requirements and scope. Then it talks about the work activities. What are to be done? Work to be done. Then it talks about uh, the project organization, the company, what it, its role towards leading the project planning process, forecast, future planning. forecast means future planning then talks about schedule schedule is the time then budget and resource plan budget talks about cost resource plan how you manage those cost how you manage those costs resource plan and have many resources uh, how you manage the resources in continuing your project then in this uh, thing uh, chapter we have contents like first you have overall description and mission then we have overall requirements limitation tasks all this i'll see i'll give you in a detail uh, analysis when i'm talking about this mission vision limitation risks then also i'm going to uh, give a this detail analysis about this project management how it covers organization what is the role of workforce training and development then finally we have a technical uh, technical uh, slides like specifications what how we are using what are the latest technologies we are used so that we can go, work with very smooth manner then how the work breakdown and assignment analysis then schedule and budget also uh, control plan quality plan risk management all this is done in a very detailed manner in the coming slides okay uh, first we'll talk about uh, like uh, what is this actually i mean um, uh, this bidding bidding the importance of project plan like competitive tool for bidding So, competitive tool actually it is an attribute. Competitive tool, competitive tool means it is an attribute that allows the organization to outperform its competitors. So, it is actually an attribute. It is an attribute. It is an attribute. Okay. So, it allows how to outperform, outperform, how to out outperform its competitors, competitors. Okay. So. actually like uh, for example it takes uh, advantages like uh, natural resources like high grade ores then low cost power so and also uh, it takes uh, highly skilled labor geographic location so like for example low cost power low cost power then high skilled labor so these are the advantages they take then geographic location then geographic location yes then to remove barriers to remove barriers so these are the thing uh, they have with the competitive tool for bidding like there is no uh, second place for winner so this you should take into consideration so that you are able to um, do your project in a very smooth manner then you have uh, uh, building strong customer relations what is this building strong customer relation actually it is the satisfaction to go above and beyond the expectations of customers so it is the satisfaction it is the satisfaction and customer expectations to go beyond beyond and above yes and it gives customers more than they expect and it will surprise and delight them so it will surprise them and they are delighted okay customers are surprised yes okay so it demonstrates professionalism and technical capability what is professionalism professionalism is to con is the conduct behavior and attitude of someone in the workplace so it is the Uh, conduct behavior and attitude it's a conduct attitude behavior of on um, like a uh, of someone in the workplace and professionalism actually it leads to uh, workplace success and a strong professionalism is a reputation with high level of uh, excellence so it is actually a, a reputation it is actually a reputation for the company when you have a very skilled persons with you then we what is this technical capability it refers to the capability which provides uh, organizational strength it provides organizational technical strength very very important technical strength okay so it gives opportunity to create advantage more technical advantage so it gives opportunity it gives opportunity to create competitive advantage to create competitive advantage 
very important. So this is how it builds customer relationship. Then we have next is building top management confidence. Confidence. So building top top management confidence is actually what is confidence? Confidence is key to success. Confidence is refers to the key to success. It is key to success. It is a key to success. Uh, it's a key to success for managers. Managers. Then leaders. So actually, it is like managing the uh, uh, subordinates with higher qualification, and also they are qualified in different disciplines. How they manage them, so in a very smooth manner. So this is how it builds the confidence, and also it demonstrates the skills within the project management skills. How what is this project management skills? So it is one of the important um, communication skill. It's one of the communication skills. Very very important is communication skill. Then you should have time management. Then you should have ability to of problem solving. Then good leadership skills. Good, good leadership skills. So these are all the very important project management skills to be taken into consideration for top management confidence or building up top management confidence. Then we have um, a building a good. Uh, successful project team so if you have all this automatically you'll have a good successful project team and it has a good uh, should demonstrate a good teamwork and commitment so what is this commitment commitment is actually a goal to one of the cornerstones so it's actually commitment is a goal it is one of the goal uh, of the cornerstone of the cornerstones goal of the corner stone of teamwork Yes, so it is like it occurs in each member. Uh, to the team focuses on achieving the team's purpose over the individual objectives. Like also, it, it is focuses on each and every member so that they are having a good focus on their objectives. And also, the commitment is it should be greater in the team members for good success. So it should be greater in among team members. Commitment greater team members for success. Success. Okay. What are the characteristics of project proposals? See, we have so many characteristics. First is systemic. Systemic. What is systemic? Systemic. Systemic means something that happens or exists throughout the whole system. Something happens or exists. Something happens or exists so throughout the whole system is systemic. But we have another one is known as systematic. Systematic is a systemic, Syste systematic. You know what is systematic? Systematic is something that was uh, like something that was to international or methodological or implemented. So it is something like methodological method. We have some method, yes, methodological, a plan or something. You can say it's a plan. So this is different from this one. Okay, then. Uh, custom design. What is this custom design? So to explain this, I'll just take a web design. Let's say it's a web design. So in a custom uh, design website, every elements of the website fits the needs. So it should fit the needs. It should need fit the needs of the customer. Very important. So it depends upon like how you uh, content on first come on first and how you based on the strategy first strategy how strategy your strategy. And how you design and design is built around it, and design is built and design is built around it. So actually, your strategy and some content first, and the, making the first as a strategy, then design is built around it. So this is how a custom design is uh, set up. Then we have a project life cycle. Project life cycle, second one. Project life cycle. Actually, it is. Um, a standard project typically has four phases. I said you in the beginning of the slides, this has four phases like uh, we have initiation, initiation, then you have planning, then implementation, then closure. So this all talks about project's life cycle. So these phases together represent the project's uh, firm path from the beginning to the end. So it's, it's referred to as project life cycle. Okay. Then we have a market uh, phase. Market phase. What is this market phase? So here also we have some three, four phases to explain this phase in a 
clear manner. Huh? First is an accumulation phase. Accumulation phase. So this talks about like from the accumulation, accumulation occurs after the market has bottomed and innovators and early adopters begin to buy, figuring out the worst one is over. So there is only accumulation. Then we have a mark up. Mark up phase, it talks about that uh, that market has been stable. It has been stable for some time, some while. Then it moves to a higher price. After that, it moves to a higher price. That is known as market phase. Then we have distribution. Then we have distribution phase. Distribution phase talks about like uh, like sellers begin to dominate. Sellers they begin to dominate. Sellers begin to dominate. That's very very important. Dominate as the stock reaches peak. That's very very important. Yes. Then the last one is down trend. Down trend. Just a minute. So what is this downturn? Downturn occurs when the stock pile price starts to tumbling down. So it is occurs when the stock price is tumbling down. The stock price is tumbling down, coming down. Down. Okay. So these are the market phases and risk. Every time, whatever you do, there is a risk in everything. So risk is like, like for example, loss or injury, or any other unwelcome circumstances. Unwelcome circumstances. Okay. So risk is actually it's uncertain, right? In a condition that occurs without expectation. So we have a technical ability. What is the technical ability to perform? What is technical ability? It is a technical skill. To carry out an associated task, technical roles like uh, IT, there is information technology, and engineering, okay, engineering, then mechanics, all these, then science, then uh, money related finance, all these are technical ability to perform. Then we have customer requirement. What are the customer requirements? So it is the characteristics, it is the characteristics or specifications. That should present in a product should be there in a product when it is when customer feels satisfaction when customer feels satisfied when customer feels satisfied yes that's important then you know it's follow on follow on potential is there you have a follow on potential uh, how you follow with the um, various areas how to continue with the potential so as, as it continues as it is uh, running out with the requirements. If, for example, when you say customer requirements here, before this, I just want to give another brief thing. Customer requirements is like uh, service, service requirement, very important. Then you have output requirement, output requirement. So these two are main uh, factors to be taken into consideration while uh, planning for customer requirements. This service requirement, like you have uh, intangible aspects of purchasing a product, like for example, like on-time delivery, should have on-time delivery, this one, on-time delivery, yeah. Good service, with the smile, service with the smile, that is very, very important, yes. Then easy payment methods, so if you want to pay something, or you want to buy something, you should have easy payment method. So this is all a customer needs. Then we have output requirements like we have um, uh, tangible uh, characteristic features like how you fulfill the customers. Like for example, when you're going in a consumer's hailing a metro cab, on-time delivery, like taxi, on-time delivery, on-time for example, on-time delivery, then it becomes output requirement. So this becomes output requirement. And also the for products like gadgets, the product specifications like loudness. For example, when you have a cell phone, cell phone you should have good loudness. So this is also an output requirement, loudness. Then clarity, clarity of uh, speakers or voice, something like that. So these are the output requirements. So uh, these are the main factors. So it's like uh, service requirements and output requirements. Okay, then what is follow on potential? Follow on potential actually, like you should uh, thank your customer every time when you have done purchasing, thank, thank, with smile, thank with the note. Thank with a note, saying that tell the uh, tell the customer that you appreciate them taking the time to meet you, and uh, taking the time to meet you. 
then also try to include one particular point that you enjoyed from meeting with them keep track keep track on potential clients okay then keep a database of customers database customer data base customer database yes so this all makes them to follow on so that if there is any offer or something like that you can contact them so that they are able to buy your products in the future then customer bidding process what is this customer bidding process customer bidding process the customer bidding process is a like a strategy used to optimize the conversation so it's a strategy strategy to optimize optimize yes to optimize the conversations yes giving value giving value to the each and every auction so this is known as auction time bidding and it's also called as complex bidding process okay then contract negotiations what is contract negotiations it involves discussion it involves discussing and compromising the contract terms contract terms okay so in each uh, order in order to reach a final agreement between two parties so so contract agreement is you have to reach an agreement between two parties two parties okay so they negotiate for the best interest for themselves and for the business so and negotiations very important like you have to uh, fix a particular uh, at last finally you fix a particular price 